Good morning, Malise. Good morning, Julia. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I had a very, very busy weekend. I've uh, like Ribfest is coming this week, people. It is this yeah. week, not and, last week. Yeah, this week. <laughs> and the speaker, we've had a lot of people saying, well, where is it taking place? They come down to the park and there was nothing last weekend. Well, because it's no, it was weekend, the confusion. My bad. I guess the messaging was not clear enough, but um, the Ribfest Community Cookout, which is now named the Community Cookout in support of Ribfest, <laughs> uh, was taking place and is still taking place until Wednesday. Um, and uh, and then Ribfest is coming to town some Thursday to Sat to Sunday. So, Thursday but I've Monday. been I've been busy. So um, my weekend was spent going all the way from here to. Um, Ottawa on Saturday, uh, distributing a whole bunch of rack cards. And then uh, yesterday from here to all the way to Brockville. And then we went to Perth and, and then came back by the little Merrickville and Smiths Falls and dropped off uh, a whole bunch of cards there trying to uh, spread the word. That it is this coming weekend. This not coming last week. week. <laughs> <laughs> not last week. Yeah, it's beginning that, to look a lot like rib fest. <laughs> but you, but you know, like we, I have always told you, I, you know, things have to be plain and simple to the point because a lot of people, it's it's really sad. Everybody just reads the first part of a sentence, and that's it. And they like, they stop reading. They just, that's yeah. that's the problem. So the post, like the 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 visual had uh, rib fest community cookout, right? Yeah. So in big bold rib fest community cookout. So um. They my post was fast. saying my my post was saying exactly what it was and what it was doing and what to do and and of course like they stop at rib fest yeah, exactly. <laughs> and exactly. uh, so you were saying somebody uh came to the park on uh Arts yeah, in the Park night yeah. and was looking to set up. <laughs> yeah, Sheldon, actually, Poor I guy. know I was um, helping take down and somebody came looking for where is Rip Fest taking place. So I thought, OK, one person. He said actually during the day while he was setting up, he had 10 people asking where Rip Fest was taking place. And one person pulled up in a trailer, a, a truck and trailer asking where to set up. Oh, so my gosh. People really bad. thought it was last weekend, but. That's Lesson learned. I'm gonna be uh, changing but, my uh, my 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 wording for next time. Speaking of wording, we have a fabulous guest today, and he's a great communicator. <laughs> he is. He is. He's, uh, there's a lot of words that can describe this man. I'm gonna tell you a few of them. I know you've got a few, but humanitarian, giver, helper, good Samaritan, a do-gooder. Like he brings people together. He's just one of these people that, again, came to Cornwall from somewhere else and seems to know everybody. <laughs> How does that happen? Seems to know everybody. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Um, also, businessman, yeah. poet, artist, and like I said, communicator, and non the least. Not, is that how you say it? Like my French is peeking out today. Go ahead citizen of the year <laughs> yeah exactly yes. so welcome lee theodore good morning he's muted good morning ladies oh good thank you for that <laughs> intro that was uh that was phenomenal <laughs> well the, the the word that kind of it's in the story that uh, they with, uh, I can't even talk either. My <laughs> tongue is all good. my tongue is all wrong. Anyway, we have a great story about Lee in the July Seeker. That's what I'm trying to say. And the word in there was philanthropist. That's why I was like, what is that word actually mean? I thought the about one, that. That's done by Lisa oh. Gray, and I had to like meditate. I was like, wait, a philanthropist is that? Don't they give it a lot of money? Aren't they like getting like hospital wings named after them? <laughs> I meditated on it. And I, I believe within the context of that, with the award, it, it's not that I was given the award for the amount of money I gave. It's for the amount of time. Yeah, that I generous. Gave. I think that's the value there. But yeah. Sure. Generous donation of your time. Yeah, because you give a lot of time and not only like... Um, we 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 see you everywhere you're you're everywhere in town you're at every function you're just you know always there but you're also very active on social media and some of the stuff that i read from you 
uh, on your posts are super well worded and and educational. I love your posts because they really push me to think. Cool. So yeah, I love your posts. Mm -hmm. I just I love following cool. you. It's uh, it's I'll always a, a, a growth. Um, you want to meet people where they are. Um, we'll take George Floyd for an example. Um, Lee, do you want it? You're kind of half off the window. Come on in more. Perfect. Now you ah, can better? see all of you now. Much better. Thank you. Um, so we'll take the George Floyd moment, for example. A large event that takes place in society that causes people to come to the discussion table with emotions. Um, and in that moment, uh, people are just saying what they're feeling. And so we've got to separate the facts, the feeling, and the faith of the moment. Um, and so in those moments, I, I've come to realize very quickly that everybody comes onto this train of thought at different stops. So we'll take specifically the George Floyd moment um, as an example. So I'm of, hair to, of Haitian descent. Both my parents are from Haiti, uh, first generation Canadian, but I'm black through and through. And so my heritage, my family's history, the information that they have given me um, informs me of certain things. And so when somebody comes to a moment and uh, they want to say something, um, I have to take a moment to not get upset that they may not possess all the information that I may be aware of and kind of pick them up from where they're starting off and try to work with them from that angle versus saying, this is the only right way of thinking, this is the wrong way of thinking. Um, but also helping people explore their thought. And I'm not saying that I'm making room for racist people uh, within the context of, like, say, George Floyd. What I'm saying is, if that is something that you have taken the uh, opportunity to publicly voice, let's examine that. And then let's see how that stands up in the face of common sense within the community. But the point of the story is, in order to provide information, it's not fair just to talk about things from my position. I think it's very, very important to measure the audience and be able to meet people where they're at. I think that's the most fair and graceful thing that you can do to kind of develop a bridge of uh, understanding. Exactly. And you're very good at that. So, so, is that like, I want to ask, is this something that you've worked on developing or is that always been like, do, have you always had this Ooh. communication gift? I, I would say I've always had the communication gift. But um, I will also say that you have to tailor your talents to the situation. Um, I will tell you that there are two Facebook profiles. There's one called Theodore Strong, which I made way back in the day. It's my original one. Um, and on that Facebook page, I remember having about 500 friends. Um, and something came up. And I think maybe it was Bernadette's election or something. And I just thought that I could communicate to those 500 people. You thought you could just trust Facebook. Um, and I learned very quickly that... Um, for as much as I care about things and I talk about the things that are important to me, doesn't mean that the audience is always going to be there. And then I opened up the Lee Theodore account for other activities. And on that page, um, I had to make a decision as to what it is I was trying to do. And so my Facebook page is kind of an accident, but it's a purposeful accident. Um, being a black person in this community, one of the challenges um, are that there are things that are relevant to our community. Um, but there aren't really spaces and places to get those messages out. Um, and so I was a kinsman for a period of time, and I'm still a kinsman in my heart. I believe in volunteering in our communities. And I remember trying to get the message out for some of their events, and it wasn't traveling as far as I needed it to, and I couldn't understand why. And I, it's, not, it's not really the major issue here. But what I realized uh, in that space was we needed to have a space within Facebook that allowed us to talk to the community. And so as my page has grown, I've used it to circumvent some of the algorithm. So we've got like the Cornell Ontario Facebook page and blah, blah, blah. We've got different pages of large groups and yet the algorithm as it were, doesn't allow for certain things. So my page is more of a community center. So if you're the little guy and you're trying to get your message out and it comes across my feed, I'm more than happy to put it out. Um, not everybody's got a population of this size. And I do believe that we, our community is pretty cool. We have like crowdfunded so many things internally as a community. I heard a statistic from the United Way, something like $4 million is raised internally by Cornwall through our own like civilian oh. donations kind of things. So all of that to say is if we don't have the avenues and the spaces and places to have these conversations, I think a lot of people feel left out. And uh, I've taken my page and it's as much as I want to talk about things that are important to me, um, I believe more in people than I do in power. 
Um, and so if I can take mm -hmm. my space and use it as a, uh, an amplifier, um, I think it serves a lot more people than me. And if we are all serving each other, then I mean, that's the beautiful community that we need to be, right? Exactly. So citizen of the year, oh, how gosh. do we get there? <laughs> Don't tell people that. Um, so the joke that I say in the elevator is I saved uh, nine cats in one tree one day. And, uh, <laughs> that's nine lives, one shot. Um, so how do we get there? I meditated on that too. Um, I believe that if you do good work under good light, you'll eventually be seen as a good person. Um, and I think you don't, Terry Muir will agree with me and Stephen Durst will agree with me and uh, a few other folks that are kind of in the lineup of those that receive this, it sneaks up on you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't go about my activities with the intention of this grand thing has to happen at the end. Um, and so when I was provided, uh, I was informed like four months ago, three months ago kind of thing. Um, the reason why it was given to me was because of my ability to connect people. And when we think about COVID and um, the challenges that it brought in terms of human interaction, uh, there are things that still needed to be done. And so along the way, we've got a, a couple kind of chapters that illuminate the opportunity for me to receive the Citizen of the Year Award. Um, so we opened up the Spicy Pearl. Um, the downtown core was shutting down because people were following their intuitive um, feelings. Uh, Roger and myself, uh, my business partner, my life mate over there at the Spicy Pearl, we decided that uh, two things were going to happen. Either the government was going to come in and shut us down or we're going to catch COVID and, you know, pass away. But one way or another, this this restaurant had to continue on. And by the way, we didn't take any uh, COVID funding. Like we did it by sweat, blood, grit, and the love of the community. Now, all of that to say, when you're in business, you need competition. And so, for mm -hmm. us to be a new business that is there, if people aren't coming to the downtown core, they're not going to see us. And so, the survival of our business was dependent on the economic activity of our neighbors. Um, God bless schnitzels. God bless all of the businesses that came before me. Point of the story is we need them to make people want to do different things. So if you go to schnitzels on mm -hmm. a Tuesday, maybe come see the Spicy Pearl on a Friday. But if the Spicy Pearl is the only thing that's open, then I mean Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we might get you two days out of the week and you might not come back downtown. So we need our neighbors to be there. Um, I went and did a video where I walked downtown and I explained um, how important it was for all of us to be supporting each other and what it means for the heartbeat of the city to continue beating so that others see that and see it as a signal to keep going through the things they're going through until we figure out what we're doing. That had an effect, and I can tell you about how that had an effect in another point. Um, so moving forward beyond that, um, the Spicy Pearl is a wonderful uh, business. Um, it turned into a three-person operation. Um, two people lived in one house, and I lived in another, and I've got a daughter who's turning five. And so what that wow. means is we have different chapters of life with different needs. Now, I'm a young person. I went to school for business marketing. Um, I've got great confidence that I can do a few things before it's time for me to write my epitaph on my tombstone. Yeah. Um, and so when we look at Roger, uh, as an example, moving into like how I got into this award situation, um, Roger wants to cook Jamaican food. Roger doesn't want to go and do other things. And so the business is best suited in the person that wants to do the thing that needs to be done. I'm Haitian. And so my aspirations are still to have a Haitian restaurant. Um, and so in that regard, there was an opportunity for April 1st for me to uh, join the River Institute. I did a panel interview. Um, I was provided the opportunity. And so we're in COVID and uh, we've got to bring people together and introduce our portion of Eastern Ontario to climate change. And so the reason why I felt I was awarded the opportunity at the River Institute was because I am able to create community in void spaces. So if we think about uh, Maryland Spice, which was a once a time, uh, once upon a time project, um, mm -hmm. we think about the uh, the existence of the Spicy Pearl. Um, these are things that didn't exist um, in a duplicity. Like there wasn't anything else in the area that was kind of doing this thing. And so mm -hmm. when we look at like trying to bring something that is a concept into a state of tangibility. Um, I feel pretty good at doing those kinds of things. So now here we are with climate change. It's a very, 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 very important um, issue of our time. And so moving through that, the one highlight that I'll, I'll point out 
there's a variety of them. There's two of them that I'll point out. Shout outs to Angela Parker over at the city of Cornwall. Um, she's doing some great work that we're going to feel for generations to come. And I, and I hope that we all support um, her endeavors and activities. Um, and so with our partnership with many community partners, but primarily the city of Cornwall, December 13th, 2021, we're able to pass the emergency climate change declaration. That has an impact on the workings that we will be doing as a city and as a community, and then as a region. The other thing that I thought was pretty cool was in one month's time, we were able to have 1000 people complete a climate change survey. Um, now that's available publicly for all the community partners that are around the River Institute. They can take that data and they can make strategic decisions around that. So it's no longer an ambiguous game of like, what are we going to do? Well, our population is informing us of a sample um, package of information. So when we start doing things that are outside of our concentration of strength, um, I think that's where growth happens. If I was only good at just doing um, marketing and speaking to the community about what I wanted, I wouldn't be able to get into these spaces. And so it takes a lot of courage um, okay. I think to um, oh to not have like you guys are in the volunteering gig, and so we know Ribfest. If we think back to the very beginning, you know, in, in, in all of the different events that we set up from the ground for the first time, um, there's a lot of it's it's very jarring because you don't know where the next step's going to come, and so when people see somebody doing things on their behalf, um, I think there's a nod in that, and I think. All of those elements contributed to me being able to be the recipient for the citizen of the year but um primarily i think what the award was given for was ah uh, just my love for the community um i can't tell you where i get the energy from I, I i can i'm a reflection of the people that are around me and i can't tell you how i get in the situations i get into um but i can tell you in those moments um if not me then who and so if i'm in that moment and i'm representing the people of our community what kind of excellence does the situation demand and what can i muster and who can i call for help so um i'm thankful for all the people that answered my call for help um i receiving this award is just a reflection of the people that have given me this opportunity to do something on their behalf so i think i think that that sums it up in a bit yeah so are are oh. you the youngest recipient I, I am. So. Do I give yeah, it away? Wow. Do I tell people? I'm three dozen year old. Three dozen. Year old. <laughs> three do I like that. Yeah. Three dozen. Three dozen three years kids. old. My mother. I'm three dozen uh, plus a, a few. Thing. Hey, ladies have a thing with age. She goes, I'm only as old as the calendar month. So in February, she's 28 years old. You know, October, she's 31. Um, oh, my. I'm 36. I'm 36. So, yeah, um, it's pretty cool for the young folks. I think that. Um, should give if we're if we're using the story the right way and it's getting into high schools and it's getting into these young spaces and places when i came to cornell about 20 years ago the big narrative was our young people are leaving they're not staying yeah and so one of the commitments because i'm 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 born in edmonton i grew up in calgary branton malton mississauga lived in ottawa for a little bit and so you get to a certain point where you're like okay i'm going to make an adult decision and the dynamics of being a young person who's from a bigger place means that there are things that I'm aware of that I can like bring to this community that don't probably exist. And so I decided to like stay. You can either be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond. And so I chose this pond to see how big I can grow. Um, and so as a young person, if we can go back to our youth and tell them that there is a way, like you can take your bold ideas to the market, you can fit in, you can help shape the organizations that exist, you can have a place in the community. I think there's a very big value um, in how we're going to build the next generations of people that believe in this community. And I think if we use this the right way, we can create a lot of good bridges. But yes, in short, I am the youngest. Um, I don't get a free parking spot, but uh, it's been pretty <laughs> But I've I've seen the hashtag uh, Citizen of the Year approved starting to yeah. pop up. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. Um, and you were you were uh, cooking at the La Belle Sorel yeah. this oh, yeah. weekend. Mm -hmm. so, and dancing and dancing and too dancing. in the kitchen. So yeah. you have to be aware of the challenges that you went through and try to help those not go through those same. If I can save you time, I'm going to. Now, La Belle Sorel, Veronique Pru, um, her and her fiance and her beautiful family. So it's a family run business. This beautiful young lady kind of opened up when the spicy pro opened up. Um, I've got an affinity for Max 
Ville, I've got an affinity for anything rural. I've got an affinity for the little guy. So here's this lady who steps out, punching above her weight class, setting up this wonderful idea to take over for the quirky carrot kind of thing. Um, Eastern Ontario really needs these vibrant spaces. So in the Spicy Pro capacity, one of the axioms that we believe in is promoting our neighbors. Um, because if we're trying to be a regional powerhouse as Cornwall as a community, we've got to be able to demonstrate more than ourselves. We have to show a web of excellence. And so I don't, I care, but I don't care. One of the things we have to believe in is our customers are not our own exclusively. We share our customers. And so if I can show my customers another place that's a good idea, then we can get seen as a place that is an authority. And so the eating part becomes secondary, but the feeling that this place is good for us becomes the primary. So long and short of it is LaBelle Sorrell sets up shop. I love what they're doing. Um, we're promoting and it's COVID. And this lady walks in and she goes, you know, I, I'm, I'm the owner of LaBelle Sorrell. Thank you so much for the support. And it was this really cool camaraderie between like business owners. So for her to come down and try our food, it really touched my heart. So moving out of the things that I'm moving out of, um, I'm in this free kind of agent space of sorts. Um, and the effects of the labor market aren't just what we read in the newspaper in the big cities. They're affecting us across the board. Um, it's not that there isn't work and it's not that the wages aren't there, but there is a um, there is a challenge in getting the right people in the right places at the right time. So mm -hmm. here I am, um, a successful enough business person type thing. And I'm older um, than Veronique. And I, I believe that my presence lends to the confidence of the business. Um, and so in that way, if I've got extra time and they do catering, they've got their front of house, they've got a patio, but they're a small crew. And so whenever they've got a catering gig, you know, they need an extra hand prepping to keep the main operations. Veronique will steal herself away to get the catering done and I'll simply run support in whatever capacity. Now, it, it's, it, Roger did it for me and I feel it's important for me to do it for others. Um, as the older folks in the room, not that I'm that old, um, just by being present for young people, you give them an abundance of confidence because it's like if Tara Muir showed up and was like, I'm going to kind of guide you through this thing. What a boon, what a feeling, what a, it makes you feel like you're in the right place at the right time doing the right things. And, and I think mm -hmm. one of the challenges that I've been like meditating on is like, what is the biggest challenge of Cornwall? And I would say it's a lack of confidence. And how do you increase, how do you increase the confidence level? Um, you've got to give people a culture that they believe in. And how do you create cultures? Um, you have to have spaces and places where lots of people are interacting and sharing that, that, that experience. So as an example, if I say the summer of 1969, I wasn't born, but I can tell you it whisked all of us to this time, to this feeling. And how does that feeling um, traverse time and get into our heads and our bodies and make us feel this way? There was a large population of people at a certain time in 1969 that had a shared experience and that shared experience becomes culture and that culture becomes pervasive across things. So we think of liftoff, we think of rib fest, we think of all of these different activities, garlic fest, we think of the, the, the Kinsman farmer's market. The more places that we create spaces for people to create memories and cultures, it's like the one thing in the week that you won't give up. I have to go to Tilly's. That's like, that's my jam because I see three people there and we have our own little thing. I got to get the schnitzels. I do a girl's night every once a month. It's our thing. Well, what we're saying is those spaces and places create the framework by which we can be who we are. So the long and short of it is LaBelle Sorrell creates a culture of excellence in its community. If I can support that and it can spawn other people to feel like they have confidence, then the economy in... Alexandria starts to grow. And so that's that that's that's all that is is believing in another business that I feel um it 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 deserves it deserves our attention. I think it's an outstanding business and if I can lend it some time I certainly will. Um well, I I think um I think we need to see competition as a positive thing and not yeah. a negative thing. Um, it's funny because I was just telling my lease, I was all over the place this weekend distributing rack cards for rib fest. And mm -hmm. it's amazing the amount of people who told me, no, you cannot put your rack cards here. And I'm like, why? If the tourism is good, you know, it, everybody benefits yeah. from it. 
So yeah, and a lot a lot of uh, business owners were just like, nope, you can't. I'm sorry, you can't. And I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> right. I tell you another secret to that. Um, so the Spicy Pro wasn't set up to be a business that that just generates money. It was set up to be a uh, a portal for diversity. And so when we have um, black people, when we have people of color, when we've got minorities, when we have people from Toronto, Montreal, or Ottawa that are coming through. Um, we want a portfolio that represents the kind of lifestyle that they have back in their urban centers. And so when you say there's a Caribbean spot, it kind of perks somebody's ear up to say, really? Um, and then they go and try it out. And then they start to ask more questions about Cornwall. Well, what else do you guys have? And what else are you known for? Yeah. And so at that point, the jig is up. If you're not talking about the bike paths, um, if you're not talking about the proximity of the water, if you're not talking about um, the beautiful living that takes place in Eastern Ontario, when you're, somebody says, what are the cool things in Cornwall? If you're not telling them about your competition, if you're not telling them about the things that like, as a business owner, you don't just go to your business. You go to your business, you make a little bit of money and you go and you spend in different places that contribute mm -hmm. to who you are. So let's go back to that rack card for a second, for, for, for a moment. If the idea is to bring in more foot traffic, who cares how it comes? You want that word of mouth. Word of mouth is one of the highest things you can get. So if somebody's picking mm -hmm. up that rack card and they're asking you, what's this about? And you say it's a wonderful event and they go to that event and they have a wonderful time. They now trust you, the yeah. source where that rack card came from. Um, and again, I'm going to go back to this restaurant competition. Okay. Um, it is challenging being in business. However, it's challenging not having customers. And there's nothing more painful and disheartening than when customers aren't coming through. And if we are equals as business owners, why don't you help me out? Why don't you tell somebody about my business? Because not everybody has the benefit of like marketing and having all that know-how. But if you as a colleague, as a neighbor, as competition are able to send somebody up the road, it makes that person come into our community more often. We're a small group. It's mm -hmm. not Toronto where like a million people at a time, I'm not going to help the guy, not, not that I wouldn't, but I'm not going to help the guy up the road because it's a dime a dozen. If they like you, they like you. In this community, we have to fight for our progress and for our future. Yep. If, yeah. if, if we're dependent on the resources that are available to us and they're small and they're limited, um, then why are we waiting for other people to do something that we need to be done? If I need it done for me, let me do it for you first. And if it feels good for you, then maybe you'll do it for me, right? And then those things start to continue and we start to grow. I'd like to shout out Bark U, Christian Bark, for letting us set ourselves up in there once upon a time. Spinner's Diner, a breakfast joint for the innovative community thinking that they provided us. I'd like to say a shout out to Kim and Leon, the previous owners of Schnitzel's. Uh, Raquel Roy, um, who trained me at Schnitzel's, then went on to move on to Mindful Cookery that allowed me to do a pop-up shop. All of these little bits and pieces contribute mm -hmm. to the reality that we're in. We we don't get here by ourselves. So why don't you help somebody get there? Because when they get there, they might be able to lend a hand for you to come forward. It's it's we got to be a community. Nobody else is coming to save us. You better save your neighbors so that they can save you, and you better save yourself. But I mean, I mean, if you need it done for you, do it for others. Yeah. <laughs> Roger Desjardins says, "Do we see you on the next election?" Oh. <laughs> oh, there's, oh man <laughs> all right so i've been meditating on this as well um, i should have asked you guys earlier at the very beginning it's my favorite question to ask is how much time do i have with you um, <laughs> you have an, until 11 if you perfect. want to so you're so good to answer mr desjardins question um 10 people very seriously have approached me. Um, this is the 10th, I would say. Uh, lots of people have, but 10 very serious people from different sides of the aisle, like asking me very seriously if I would take up the opportunity for politics. Um, politics. You got one, you have one vote already from Alex Parthenay. Eh? <laughs> thank you. So I'm going to be concise with this. Um, I have great, deep aspirations for politics. But there are priorities of my life that are far more important that have to be seen through before politics takes place. Politics is a machine and it will grind you. Um, and if you are not committed and if you don't have passion for people, um, the things that you're going to go through and the things that it's going to put you through, um, 
you have to have good foundations to go through it. So I will say, I will say that I'm highly interested. Um, I'm highly poised to be successful at it. But the most important thing is to set up our community for success. So for this round, um, I've stepped back into a campaign manager role. Um, I'm supporting um, Sarah Good. And then we have uh, Fred um, and Jao. And pardon my manners for the pronunciation of the last name. Um, he's a black candidate. And so Roger and myself at the Spicy Pearl have endorsed him. Um, we're not the only ones. You need 25 signatures. But the point is, we do have a black candidate in the running. Um, we also have a, a wonderful female candidate. Um, and so when we want to think about changing the decision making of our community, we have to look at the decision makers. And so if I truly believe in this and it's not self-serving, can I help somebody else do the thing that needs to be done? So other than that, my answer to Mr. Desjardins in short is I will be entering into politics, but not in this cycle. Um, it's important to do things the right way. And so before I get there, I want to make sure that I'm sure and I'm certain. Um, and I appreciate the encouragement and the confidence. What I would ask you to do is leading up to that eventuality, still support the things that I'm endeavoring on. My goal is, even especially with this year, with the Citizen of the Year, is to sh share the spotlight. Um, it's the thing that I do well, but I think with this moniker, I, I think there's other places and spaces we can do things with. And so in the meantime, I want to see if we can get Cornell to be a more regional player, to get people to look at us in a different way. There are things that you can do as a mayor and there's things that you can't do as a mayor. So mm -hmm. I would rather spend the time in the space doing all of the things that I probably can't do as a mayor so that in the eventuality of being in that space, those works have been done and I can focus solely on the work that would be um, of a mayoral capacity. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I think I will, but not in this round. Um, vote Sarah Good, um, vote for Fred, vote for all the wonderful people, but... Um, if you believe in me, then believe in those folks too. Is um, your daughter part of your decision? Oh, she's always a part of my decision. Always. Um, there's two sides to that answer. One, um, an immature or a, a narrative that that is out of control has the effect of pulling other bystanders into it. My daughter's five. There's a beauty of watching a young person grow into a human being. There's a beauty of, uh, and there's a blessing to being a parent. The amount of work that I feel that is required to be a mayor, I, I want to go to my daughter's field trips. I, 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 I want to be able to do homework with her. I want to take her swimming. And I'm sure that there are mayors out there doing everything, and it's not that you can't. But also not missing out on her formative years um, is very important. Mm -hmm. But then more important than that, as she grows up, it's very important for her to understand that she's the primary focus of my life. My family should always know that they come first um, and that's demonstrated in my actions. And so there are still certain kinds of steps that I need to have um, taken in my own life before I can feel that I can justify to my daughter that this is something that makes sense for me to do. Um, her smile is too beautiful to be avoided. Um, and so in that regard, I'd rather be in as many opportune moments as possible to see that happen for sure. Can yeah. I share something with you, Lee? Sure. So um, last week, my son, 17 year old, um, going to university this uh, fall to uh, University of Ottawa, super proud of him. Uh, he was at Spicy Pearl because he's totally addicted to your <laughs> spring rolls. <laughs> Shout outs to Yada. Those are those high spring rolls. Um, and he saw you there with your daughter. And um, I want to say how you impact people without even knowing it sometimes, oh, because my boy came back to me and he said, I don't know who this guy was, but this little girl was asking a million questions <laughs> <laughs> and he was answering every single one of them so eloquently and just giving her all the time and all the attention that, you know, he said, this guy's a total awesome father. <laughs> I'm touched. And uh, thank you so much. And she deserves yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's the little things sometimes. You don't even know that, you know, you're being watched, but yeah. you are. <laughs> my my mom, my father, uh, one of the Haitian values that they, they, you never know who's watching you and always operate and knowing that there's somebody in the community that's paying attention to your existence and your reflection of your family. Um, 
thank you for noticing that. I'm going to take a moment to say something in terms of like male mental health, single father, or just fathers in general. Um, it's important for us to recognize the trappings of our life, our history, things that have happened to us that we can avoid in the opportunity of being a parent. What, who was, who was the father that you needed to have in the moments that you didn't have them? And with that wisdom, given the opportunity to do something different, what is your obligation and responsibility you must transcend? You must make better choices so that the future does not suffer the past. And I'm not saying that uh, my father was uh, this horrible, horrible person. That's another conversation itself. But I'll tell you that there was room for improvement. And given the opportunity to have the blessing of my daughter, um, oh, yeah, she's going to get the best even if I don't have the time for it. Um, she only you only pass through life once and there's nothing wrong with being a kid nothing wrong with being a kid and it's our job just to give them give them the opportunity to live as who they are and so if you want to ask me a million questions yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna have 999,999 uh, answers for you um but yeah that's yeah, super cool. awesome. Yeah, I noticed too, actually, whenever we were at the uh, Chamber Awards too, like your daughter, she had a big suitcase of <laughs> stuff with her to keep her busy. And, you know, you were paying attention to everything else, but you were paying a lot more attention to her and what she was doing. And she was asking you questions there too, and you were still answering them. It was awesome watching She's, she's like my, uh, my day one homie. So we celebrated uh, New Year's together. So she stayed up to like midnight, past midnight. Um, and so the opportunity for this award um, was a little past nine o'clock and I spoke with her mother and she felt it was okay and everything else. And so keeping her comfortable and stuff like that, but also hoping that she stayed awake long enough to like take in that moment. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think that over our lifetime, she won't remember it exactly. And there's video footage and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. it, it's, I'm happy that she was there. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell me. I see a question here, guys. Should I read we have yes. We have somebody saying, have you thought about opening a youth center? Mm. What a fantastic question. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and so, and I don't mean to like, there are an abundance of things that um, I'm doing with my time and can do with my time. There are three things that I'll say. The Boys and Girls Club, Cats Meow. What a beautiful organization from being a board member when it was just in the beginning to all the work that it's done now. Um, I'm still friends with some of the youth that have gone through there. They're now adults contributing very well to society. The Boys and Curls Club does a phenomenal job. Um, we have Big Brothers, Big Sisters, phenomenal organization. Yes, they operate, both of these operate in different capacities. Mm -hmm. We do have drop-in centers. There is um, a couple youth organizations that are doing good work, um, but, but to answer the question a different way, um, I still um, maintain relationships with youth. I still seek them out. I still want to be able to be in their space to tell them. I, I can tell them my life story and tell them that it is possible for them to like succeed and survive and make a way through. I want the youth to be there. But to answer the question short, I will not be operating a youth center, but I will be doing activities um, I'm seeking out opportunities for activities for our youth for certain. I don't want them left behind. Yeah. That's good. They're very, it's very important in, in community mm -hmm. to have a, a space, a safe space for them where they stay out of trouble. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I asked all my questions. My least, do you have any more? Well, I mean, my biggest question was, how do you motivate yourself to do all this stuff? But you've kind of answered a lot of that, too. But where does your motivation come from? Like, you've got so much. Well, you're 36 years old. For, well, three dozen no. years old. You have no. a lot more energy than I do. But I'm going to stop you just for a moment because we have a follow up on that question. Oh, nice. <laughs> Would you be interested oh. in partnering with someone to open up a youth center? Okay. Oh, yeah. So uh, we're going to come back to your question, my Lise, and I'm going to try to answer this question properly. So yeah. um, I'm presently the president of Cause Roots Empowerment Projects. Cause Roots is an organization that gives us garlic fast and it also um, operates the programming to a certain degree of the Kinsman's Farmer's Market. Um, we have a project 
that is called Rooted in Culture that will be coming out in the future. There is going to be a documentary on local farmers that is being put together as we speak. You'll see more information coming about that in the future. Um, my wonderful cohort, Brenda Norman, is a wonderful human being. So in that sense, that is a single project. I have an opportunity for a POC, people of color, um, event and entrepreneurial space out in Belleville that is requiring my support so that they can go speak to their council in Belleville. Um, there is a, a wonderful um, spoken word project that's taking place in Nova Scotia with a once upon a time resident of Cornwall, Steph McAleer. Um, there's an opportunity for a multicultural festival that's going to take place uh, potentially in um, August. Um, there is our election campaign, Sarah Good, shout out to her, October 24th, we've got municipal elections. Um, there is still the opportunity for a couple more restaurants. Um, what else is there? I do websites by day. Um, so what I'm trying to illustrate, and, and I apologize for people out there like, hey, you didn't say my name. There are so many things that are going on that I'm a part of. Um, and it's not to say that the youth initiative is not important. Um, I would be interested, but here's where things get difficult is capacity. Um, I have a wonderful males mental health podcast that is being set up with a gentleman friend of mine in Ottawa. Um, where do I get the time for it? I do weekly cycles, but at the same time, I have to be very, very careful because again, why am I not running for mayor? There are primary important aspects of my personal life that have to be achieved before I can start to make these other inroads. And so um, I love all of these opportunities. And what I like to do is I like to put them to the attention of other people that may have more capacity for it. So going back to this George Floyd moment, there's a lot of emotion, a lot of energy. Shout outs to Stacey Otley, who uh, came into our community, looked around and said, hey, this is an odd moment in our community. I'd like to do something about this. What can I do? And I said, you need to speak with Michelle Allenet. From that, you had an opportunity where Korea was born. Um, and Korea is a, um, it, it, it's a, it's a diverse group that occupies the space to address the needs of diverse cultures in our community. So as much as being a black person in our community and being a black person period is a passion, it's important to be able to talk into those places and spaces. I know that I cannot occupy all spaces and all things at all times. However, there are people that are in our community that are definitely interested in these things. So. To our question, um, I would love to have conversation to see what the need is. I would love to be available to be aware to help guide and support it. Um, but to be a person who is going to um, run it, operate it, it's a very scary thing because it's going to bump into other aspects of my life. And I don't want anybody to suffer my shortcomings. So to answer your question, I would love to talk about it. And I'd love to be able to see who'd be interested in it. And you'd be surprised how many other people could do the exact same thing that I'm capable of doing. Now, my lease, your question. Your uh, motivation and energy. Where does it come from? <laughs> um, so in my life, so when I first came to Corn, we, we landed at 1630 Brookdale Avenue. Um, 1630 Brookdale Avenue is also known as Westgate. It's low-income housing. And so when you get into low-income housing um, and you grow up on welfare, um, you are informed that a lot of the choices that you're going to make are going to be limited by your capacity and your resources and your opportunities are available to you. So if you don't have money, you're going to be, you're going to have to work hard, which is fine. And so you hear a lot of no's, you hear a lot of, you can't do that. I remember being in college and this is like, it's not like, I'm not driven by rejection at all, but I'm driven by how it exists. And when you explain it to somebody or you express it to somebody, they kind of look at you like you're crazy. And so in that kind of like looking at me like I'm crazy, there's an opportunity to make you my biggest fan. If you are my biggest mm. hater, I can't wait to make you my biggest fan. And so I remember being in college and it was a whimsical question, but it was an important question. It was a question of direction. And a teacher asked the class, what do you want to be when you grow up? What is it that you want to do with your college? And so... I remember I was sitting, I was like, okay, I made it to this institution called college. This is higher learning. This is where we mold our young or our willing into capable human beings um, through trades or whatever skill set it is. In this case, it was business marketing. Um, this particular class was not marketing related, but the question was, what do you want to be? And as this lady went around 
everybody answered. And I, I shot for the moon. I, I said, I want to be prime minister of Canada. Yeah. And right, 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 right. And so she just, she just glazed over and went to the next person. There wasn't a conversation there. It was almost like, and so the next year, Barack Obama becomes the <laughs> president. And so it was all of these. And so, and then I remember like, hey, I think a Caribbean restaurant could work. And it was like, well, when pigs fly, you know what I mean? We had swine flu. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's all of these um, moments in my life where I've put things to the reality and of the people around me and they kind of like, yeah, I don't know. And so I've received enough no's in my life. And mm -hmm. so when somebody comes to me and they say, hey, I've got an idea, um, I don't want to give them a no. Um, one of the things that I tell people that like, I really want people to understand, and I know we don't have capacities to help everybody, but the story that I tell people is there's a man who's traveling in the desert. Thirsty is all heck. Water is like vital. Water is life. Shout out to Aguasasne. Water is life. And so he approaches the first person in the desert and he says, hey, I see you've got a glass of water. I see you've got this glass of water. Could I just have a sip, a sip? And the person looks at their glass of water and they, they know they're in the desert and they go, nope. <laughs> and so this person continues to the third person and they go, hey, um, can I just have a sip? I've been walking. I just need a little bit of what you have and I can continue on in my life just a little bit. And they go through nine people looking for just a sip of water. They get to the 10th person. When they get to the 10th person, the person says yes, finally. Do you know what it's like to shop your idea around or have a dream or believe in something? Or It's a very difficult thing. And so with that difficulty, I don't want, if it comes to me, I have to do the human thing and I have to consider what it's worth to at least help this person through. Help them get to the next person. Give them a sip of this precious resource, this thing that I don't even have enough of. Because they're not asking me to live their life. They're just asking me for guidance, asking me to be a player in the chapter of their life. And if my efforts and my energy and my time can help them see the next step, the next lily pad, or have just enough belief to see themselves through, holy poops in Toledo's hot dogs in Hawaii, the amount of magic that can happen. Look at Jan Shores over at Sip and Scoop. She's before the Spicy Pearl, a woman of diverse identity, a woman of ethnic class, a woman of young age who sets out to do this thing. Nobody, nobody had to believe in her. I wanted to believe in her because I wanted to be her. And so when we start doing this thing and also understand that I'm a black person, think about like the not the crazy of it, because we all drink water and eat apples. We all borrow from each other. We're all human beings. We have got mouths. We've got bums. We're the same. And so if I can believe in the things of the community that don't necessarily come out of my cultural, um, you know, heritage of sorts, traditionally speaking, imagine the power and impact when people start believing in the things that are coming out of my world. This is how we're going to build our community. We're going to have to believe in one another. And so when you ask me, where's your motivation? I need somebody to do it for me. And if I can demonstrate an example of me doing it for myself. And so what I'm also trying to do is I'm trying to do all of the work that's required so that another black person or another person that is of ethnic value can just be who they are. They don't have to be this dynamic, stellar, up and down person. They can just go to the market as who they are. But I think the market will look at them and say, hey, I know Lee Theater is this capable, wonderful human being. And you know what? I'm going to give you the time of day. I think this is the trailblazing that's done. Just like Bernadette did it. Just like, oh, one second. What's his name? We have uh, not the Benson Center. Who's our guy? It's the field. Oh, he's a black man that was the recreation leader. Ah. Uh, Ladies, you are community. Turner, like, isn't it Turner? Is it the Bob Turner guys? It's the Bob Turner. It's the Bob Turner. Yeah. And so when you've got all of these like predecessors that just did their job, that just stood in that space and provided excellence, they didn't have to be excellent, but they provided excellence. What it mm -hmm. does is there is a knock on effect. And so when you see Fred go to the table as a candidate in our community for municipal council, um, 
the opportunity that we've done in the spicy pearl space, the opportunity that other black people, and also my motivation is for the black people that are not in the occupancy of this space. I think of my friend Agnes Hantel. She's a wonderful nurse, which is something that we need as an occupation in our community. She's got a lovely daughter who on her bus ride to school was called all sorts of obscene names oh. to the point where this family moved themselves out of our community. And so what is my obligation to those families and those people that, that don't have as big of a voice or they need, I'm not saying I'm a big bad wolf, but you need to know that there are large forces that exist in our space um, that are going to push back on behalf of those that are small. Um, so my motivation is there are people don't have, they don't have my voice. They don't have my privilege of presence. And if not me, then who? If not me, then who? And if I'm waiting for somebody to take care of my problems um, and they don't show up, my problems are still going to exist. So if I can at least be known, I had a moment. I've got a friend out there, Olan, um, beautiful uh, gentleman. And I haven't been able to get back to him. But he came to Cornwall and somebody made the beautiful decision um, to flip through a magazine and point at my face and say, that guy will help you. Well, I'm uh, running the Spicy Pearl. I, I'm not the uh, Social Development Council. I'm not the Chamber of Commerce. I'm not uh, the business. I'm, I'm not a, a social resource, but things start to happen where they go, hey, you are black. Lee is black. He might be able to help you in this community. And so now we're starting to create like this green book network where like, hey, there's pocket, there's a thief now. You know what I mean? There's, there's, there's these little things that are popping up. You know, that's the uh, African Francophone immigration from of Cornwall SDG that do work for refugees and new um, entrants into our community. There are all of these small little places where we can now point to people. And if I can be a nexus or a hub um, to save people time and help them out, then that's my service to the community. It's not fun. I can tell you that I'm, I'm tired, but my life doesn't care. The needs of the community don't care. And if I work hard enough, I will find my peace soon enough, but I have to make sure the priorities of my life are taken care of. And a part of those priorities is helping the person to the left of me and helping the person to the right of me. Because if my neighbor's at peace, then I've got peace. Do you follow me? Yeah, yeah that's good. Actually, somebody had said uh, that you really are motivating them. It said Facebook user yeah. that you, yeah, you so motivate me. You are the real deal, oh. Lee. Actually, I, you know, I'm listening to you right now. You could be a preacher in a oh. church. I'm like, <laughs> That's okay. how I was feeling. <laughs> we've, we've got eight minutes, okay? We've got we've got eight minutes. And I to, <laughs> there are so many stories packed into my life, and I and I got to do it justice. So I've got to give shout out to the people. So when I received when I first received word that I was going to receive this award, I said, "Okay, guys, can I bring two people on stage with me?" They said, "Yes." So I was like, "Can I bring my mother and my daughter?" They said, "Yes." I go, "I go, okay." Can I bring ten people with me? <laughs> they said, "Yes." I go, "Can I bring like thirty people with me?" And they said, yes, it didn't happen that way that night. But here's what I was thinking. We just came out of COVID. There are a lot of like really every human being st stepped to the plate of COVID. If you went into the mental tunnel of your mind and chose every day to go into the world in this idea that you might catch it and die, because we didn't have all the answers at the time, mm -hmm. it was a very jarring thing. And so many people went through things that you wouldn't believe, and they went through them. So for me to receive this award outside of COVID, I felt kind of like, whoa, I think there's a danger here. I think we might be missing out on other people that may have done greater things to survive COVID. And I said, I think it would be beneficial for me to have other people that have done work that will probably never get seen that deserve to have the recognition. And if I could have them accept this award with me, it would reflect what the community meant to itself during COVID. It didn't work that way. And that's okay. And so in the midst of that story, one of the things that I want to tell you is, I present the smile that needs to be seen so that we're all smiling at each other. If it's infectious, it's because I want you to go smile at somebody else, but it's hard. It is absolutely hard being a human being. <laughs> um, and so remember that story I told you about like walking down like Pitt Street during COVID, the businesses were closed mm -hmm. and I was trying to like emote to the public. We have as an example of a story, we have Jen Blair Manley who's over at Royal Lepage. And so we know like the, the COVID bump of the real estate industry and everything else. So here I am going through being an owner, small business owner. All small business owners know that it's not glamorous. 
And there's like a small margin where you get to collect profit and you get to do something with your life. So me and Roger are equal partners. Roger put up the money for the business. This business is his. He is the Jamaican heritage. He is the engine. I am the cultural representation and the marketer and the person who speaks to the business. Now, all of that to say is we split ourselves 50-50. So there's only so much money that can go around. And so Jen Blair Manley sees this video of me walking through the downtown and she feels so touched by this. And so let's just say a year and a bit goes by. She reaches out to me and she says, Lee, I want to have a conversation with you. I say, sure. Um, I sit down with her. I've got my daughter with me. She buys us breakfast. And she says to me, you know, what is blocking you from being your fullest self? And I explain to her the details of my life. And she says, Lee, I think you were meant to be a catalyst in our community. And I want to support you in that endeavor. And I'm going to flash forward through a few of these things. You're going to have to wait for me to come out and create this, this different video for this. But I get to her office and I, and, I, and I do a presentation of who I am and what it is that I believe that I can do. I don't know if they want to hire me to do um, some kind of business work or what have you. And so two hours into this three-hour conversation, her administrative assistant, um, Crystal Bowen, shout outs to her, she begins to well up and she says, Lee, you're such a good speaker. Like you've moved me. Um, and so Jen says, you need to set up a business consultancy um, organization and I'm going to support you in those activities. And so she feels that I have enough ability to speak to audiences that she wants to get me in that space. And she's been supporting me in certain activities to help get me into that space. She sets up another meeting. She says, I want you to speak to my office of four agents. Um, and so I come back in and I'm speaking with four people. So from two people, I'm speaking to four people. At the end of that meeting, we've got three people in the room that are crying. And we're all exchanging all of this, like we're, we're being therapists to each other and this beautiful human interactions happening. I know that I have a certain gift and you have to be very careful how your gifts are used and when they're used and how much space it's being used for. But I can tell you that there is a future by which I feel, and it's not just in like in a political sense, but there is an opportunity for me to be speaking to the public. I just want to make sure that, again, the priorities of my life are being satisfied before I run away on a dream of an idea. Um, but I would love to speak to people to help bring out that feeling inside of them. Because everybody, everybody, everybody has a certain amount of magic and a certain amount of potential. Mm -hmm. Sometimes all it takes is a hand behind your back that makes you believe in yourself, that makes you take that extra step to do those wonderful things. Um, so thank you for recognizing that. Know that I'm speaking for the voices that are little or small or voiceless. Also recognize that I speak from a perspective that is unique to our community. Um, you don't have to um, believe in everything that I say, but recognize that there are others out there that reflect me and you should listen to somebody that looks like me. It'll save us a lot of time if you do. <laughs> well, Lee, wow. this was such a lovely time with you thank you so much for coming to speak with us i think i think whatever you touch is gonna is destined for greatness um i think you got like you said a gift uh communicator is how i would qualify you mm -hmm. um yeah so uh best of luck in thank you. everything you you touch thank you my last shot of this art walk is coming out folks so be sure to yes come up Please. Yeah, yeah the and will will we hear some of your poetry? At oh God, Rock? I'm not a poet, eh? I'm a guy where if somebody goes, "Listen, Lee, we have a need. Can you do this thing?" and I just do a thing. Um, <laughs> I, I think the poetry aspect will have to be formed out in better ways for me personally. Not I'm talking about art walk, but me as a person. I'm not a poet, but I've got things that I want to say. Will you be hearing from me? No, I'll be a volunteer uh, <laughs> running around doing things. But I, I see the demand and the need, and I will see what I can do in the future, guys. I promise. <laughs> Nice. Awesome. Have a great day, Lee. We'll, uh, you, we'll catch you at you one of the events. Work. We love you. Thanks for being here. Bye, right. ladies. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Oh well, boy, that was uh, that was a great chat. Yeah, it was. Like it was one of those. Like I'm not sure where this is gonna go, or what's what he's gonna talk about, or what we're gonna talk about. But boy, it filled uh, the like whole hour. Minutes. Yeah, sixty minutes just flew by. It's but. Uh, but I do want to do my draws before we go. Oh, yes. I okay. have to do so them really fast. Time. Have time. Go ahead. So basically, I have three sets of tickets from Alkaline Entertainment from Jeff Brunet that were donated. Actually, I've got them each in the boxes here. So we have. I'll be right back.
Okay, we have two tickets for Guy Melanson and his tribute to Willie Nelson featuring Brian Moon with a salute to Merle Haggard. This is taking place Friday, July 22nd at the Royal Canadian Legion. So we have two tickets for that. So I am going to shake the names in the box. What I did was I put a post on Facebook yesterday asking people which concert would they like because there are three to choose from and give me your name and why you want to go. So I have some names in the box for this one. I have I have my trusty uh, partner here, Sheldon, beside me working on a video. <laughs> He's got headphones on, so I'm going to have him pick a name out because I don't want to do it. Okay, pick a name. All right, so Sheldon has picked a name. So the winner for the Willie Nelson is Ashley Simser. She wins a pair of tickets for Willie Nelson. I wrote her name here. Actually, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. I wrote her name and she loves Willie's music. So Ashley, you're going to be going July 22nd, which is this this weekend, you're going to be going to see Willie Nelson. So I'm going to get a hold of you and let you know how you're going to get your tickets. So I have another box. I got to show these boxes, though. These are so cute. A little British satchel. Boxes from the Dollar Tree. I love the boxes. So I have another set of tickets. These are for George Strait. Uh, it's a George Strait tribute featuring... Featuring Nelson Colt. I made the tickets. I just couldn't remember what I put on them. And this is taking place Friday, July the 29th, which is next Friday. So we have some tickets in here as well. I'm taking the box. I'm going to have Sheldon take a ticket out. All right. So here's the ticket that he pulled. So the one for the... Tribute to George Strait featuring Nelson Colt is Tammy Lynn Sale. Tammy Lynn Sale, the framboise. Her hubby and her are big George Strait fans. And she had written that the hubby actually sang, sang one of George Strait's songs when he proposed to her. So that's an awesome story. So you're going to be going with your hubby, Tammy Lynn Sale, the framboise. You're going to be going to see the tribute to George Strait on Friday, July the 29th. So we have one more set of tickets. And this one is for August 27th to see Rick Jones with his tribute to Alan Jackson. Again, these are all at the Royal Canadian Legion put on by Alkaline Entertainment. And to get more information, you can call 613-933-5882 to, uh, to get more information about the shows. I am going to actually get Sheldon's trusty hand again to pull out a name. So, okay, this is what he pulled out. Jojo Berber. I'm hoping I say that name right. You're going to be going to see the Alan Jackson tribute on August 27th. So I will get a hold of all these three people and let them know how to get their tickets. So I did all three draws. Look at the cute boxes, Julia. You're muted. I'm muted. Okay, I'm not yeah, muted yeah. anymore. Yeah, unmute yourself. Your mouth was moving. Nothing was coming out. But look at the cute boxes. <laughs> yeah, this is the yeah. English satchel. Just love it. So we've yeah, got you showed three, them. We've got three, uh, three names here. So I'll get a hold yeah. of the people. So I, uh, I had to go because um, I am um, selling the Midway tickets for Rib Fest. So if you buy them in advance, so if you buy them before the 21st um, online, and they're also available at Little Caesars Pizza, um, they are $30 in advance and $40 at the gate. So that's a, it's a nice substantial savings. If you buy them in advance, you can get them on cornwallribfest.com. 
and um like i said at little caesars but uh, that's why i had to go because somebody was at the door <laughs> so so actually so it's for the it's for the carnival right that for the carnival, yes absolutely so so what do you get like you get a whole day of rides uh, what is that so include? yeah the the vouchers are uh redeemable for a bracelet and the bracelet gets you in the carnival for unlimited rides so. okay so that bracelet you could just use on the one day though yeah one day okay mm -hmm. wonderful yeah because if you've got like three or four kids going with you forty dollars is a nice savings yeah it is absolutely so uh, get your tickets all right my lease i think uh um that's it for me today anything else you want to add before we leave well i am still wearing my item of the week which we're going to talk oh, about next week no no we'll talk I guess. about okay, it next we'll talk week. about it next week we have some food things that we i picked up we've about been trying what, to we've been trying ago. to uh yeah it's Thanks. been it's been a while but gosh we're just having so much fun with our guests these yeah. days we don't have time to do anything else so <laughs> but we will be trying our stewart's honey our different flavored honeys thank goodness they're sealed they're not gonna i gotta i gotta i got a confession to make you did not open one i opened one because i was making salmon oh. and i spread some of it on my salmon <laughs> oh my god because i've been looking at that too and i said i'm not opening these because i'm waiting well for i had this perfect fillet it was beautiful and i'm like it needs something on top and so i just you know so you used with... the garlic infused honey which yeah. we're gonna we will do a taste test when we uh have a minute but next week we yeah. may not have a minute again because next week i know because next next week the boys are with us yeah yeah Stephen duris and ivan labelle so we're going to be chatting with them you know getting opinions on different subjects so i guess we're going to wait for for another week i guess so that. anyway <laughs> all right folks we'll have yourself a great day and a super duper week see you next week okay, bye, bye.